Excuse me? I wouldn't go and live with you again even if you begged me. And what's your problem? You think I'm the one that's getting carried away? As if. Don't take your frustration out on me. Just because your career has come to a standstill. What did you just say? My name is Ayaka. I'm just a regular girl that likes animals. The reason why I started liking animals has a lot to do with the environment in which I was brought up and the way my family treated me when I was a child. Oh my goodness, Mika. You look so cute in that dress. It suits you so well. Good thing we brought in two more different colors. Hey, honey, we got a call for a part in a TV drama. What? Which TV network is it? Okay, stay calm. It's Rickelodeon. Really? I'm going to be in a TV show on Rickelodeon? Yeah, you are. You're going to be a child star, sweetie. You did a good job. Rickelodeon? This is wonderful news. We've come so far. Listen to me very carefully, Mika. If you show how brilliant an actor you are to the important people at Rickelodeon, you'll be on your way to becoming rich and famous. Yeah, I'm going to work so hard. Great. Then let's get started by practicing your lines for 10 hours every day. We're going to be completely focused on training you, Mika. Yeah. Ugh, what are you looking at, Ayaka? We're busy. Get out of the way. I'm sorry. I was just a little hungry. Can I have lunch now? What? That's it? Go to the kitchen and make your own lunch. We're too busy to be dealing with you. Ayaka, mom and dad are busy helping Mika to practice for her role in Rickelodeon. I'll give you some money, so just go out and eat somewhere, okay? You'll just be in the way if you hang out around home. Okay. Come on, Mika. Let's start by exercising your face muscles. My parents weren't interested in me at all when I was a child. I could tell the difference in the way they treated me and my sister that they didn't love me. And I did a lot to try and earn their love. But even when I got full marks on all my tests, even when I got a certificate at school, everything I told them went into one ear and out of the other. All they could think about was Mika, about how cute and talented she was. Mika was the one with potential. I was the one that was worthless to them. I wondered if my parents would love and care for me like they did for Mika. If I had some talent too, being smart enough wasn't good enough. So I probably needed to be cute like Mika. As you can see, I didn't belong anywhere. I wasn't welcome in my own home, so I usually spent my time outdoors. And the first place I would go was, Oh, hello, Ayaka. Thank you for coming to visit me again. I'm so happy to see you. This is Mani Robo Pet Shelter. It's a small building that houses rescue dogs, rescue cats, and pets whose owners can no longer take care of them or have passed away. This lady is running the pet shelter all by herself. She's really kind. She doesn't tell me that I'm in the way. And most of all, it's really fun looking at all the animals. Spending time here helps me to forget everything that happens at home. Aw, the doggy's so cute. He's eating so much. Isn't he the sweetest? He's still a puppy. Do you think you might be able to take him home with you? You could take care of him at home. But my mom and dad would say no. <laughs> I'm just joking. You don't really have to take him. It's more than enough that you're coming to visit them almost every day. All of the animals look really happy to see you when you arrive. I really loved animals. I wanted to take one home and watch it, if my parents would let me. But I was sure that they would say no and refuse to let me bring it home. But I could imagine. I stared around at all the cats and dogs and wondered what it would be like to have a pet at home. I know. Come over here, Ayaka. I want to show you something. The lady called out to me, and I followed her the next room down the hallway. This room was filled with small cages, and I was surprised to see what was inside. Wow, there's so many. They're so small. I bet you didn't expect there to be this many. The other room was separated into two areas for cats and dogs. But this room was filled with rabbits, guinea pigs, and hamsters. Why are they all in this room? Why can't they be in the other room? This room is especially for pets whose owners can't watch over them anymore. Their owners gave them up. Really? That's sad. I really, really wanted to take a pet home with me. So I couldn't understand why anyone would want to give their pet up. When I was still a child, I couldn't think of a good enough reason to. I couldn't imagine giving up my own pet. I was thinking about how sad all the pets must be and was looking around at each of them when, oh, there was a cage filled with hamsters right next to me. And inside, I could see a little one staring right back at me. Oh, the hamsters? Are you interested in them? Yeah, I've never seen one that's this cute. He's so small and fluffy. Whenever I felt lonely at home, or I was told that I was in the way. I would come to this pet shelter to look at the animals and feel better. It was supposed to be a place for people to come and choose a pet to take home with them. But the lady at the pet shelter seemed to understand that I didn't have anywhere else to go and never complained about me taking up space. 
She was kind enough to let me walk around and just look at the animals for as long as I wanted. The hamster that was looking at me was fluffy and had a small round body. I couldn't help but fall in love with him. He was too adorable and I felt like I couldn't leave without him. What do I have to do to be able to take this hamster home? What can I do? What? You want to take him home? But, but I thought you said that you can't have pets because your parents said no? Yeah, I know. But he's been staring at me all this time. He's telling me he wants to come with me. I can't just leave him here. Hmm. Do you really think that you can take care of him? Keeping a pet is a lot more difficult than you think it is. And you can't take him home without your parents' permission. They might get angry and tell you to bring him back. You've got to think very carefully, Ayaka. It's okay. I'll convince them somehow. So, can you tell me what I need to take him home, please? I was desperate. I begged her to tell me what I could do. And after thinking about it, she said, There are a lot of conditions that need to be met before you take a pet home. You need to show that you can really take care of him, that the environment at home is safe. And there's a lot about whether your parents can afford to take care of the hamster as well. Okay, then I'll ask my grandma if she can help me. After telling the hamster I would be back, I ran just a few blocks down the road to where my grandma was living. I explained that I wanted a hamster and that I needed help to keep the hamster somewhere safe and warm. And she agreed to help me keep him at her house, where it was possible for me to come and visit almost every day. After getting my grandma's permission to keep the hamster at her house, I took her with me to the pet's shelter to see the lady again. My grandma was still pretty active, and she had plenty of space in her house to keep a large hamster cage. In order for a senior citizen to adopt the pet, they needed to find someone that would be able to act as sort of a godparent to the pet for when something happened to them. But thanks to my grandma asking my mom to be a secondary caretaker, my mom agreed to it a lot more smoothly than if I had asked her. After it was decided that my grandma would adopt the hamster for me, we prepared a cage for his arrival, and I borrowed books from the library on how to take care of hamsters. And then, it was finally time to welcome him into my grandma's house. But just a few days after bringing him home to my grandma's house, a friend of my grandma's passed away, and she had to go away for a week to help prepare and attend the funeral. Grandma spoke to my mom, and it was decided that I would take care of Maru for the entire week. But while I was carrying Maru's cage back to my house, I couldn't help but be scared of what might happen. In the beginning, I was just excited that I would have my own pet and that I could take care of a hamster. But once I started thinking about keeping Maru at our house and not grandma's, I wondered if mom and dad would actually let me keep him. I was scared that they might throw him out. But what was I going to do if they said he couldn't stay at our house? But while I had been thinking about what to do, I had already arrived at the front door to our house. I'm home. Huh? When I got inside, the hallway was dark. There weren't any lights on in the living room either, and the whole house was silent. I wondered where everyone was, and remembered that mom and dad had been so excited about Mika getting another audition at another big TV network this morning. The three of them were probably attending Mika's audition together, and had left me at home alone. I turned the lights on in the living room, and found that there was a pouch of microwave curry on the table. There wasn't a note left with it, but I knew from experience that it meant that I had to warm it up and eat it by myself. While I was eating my dinner in the dining room, I couldn't help but think of all the bad things that could happen once my parents came home. Take it back to your grandma's place right now. B but grandma's away. I can't leave Maru on his own. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to say yes. I only said it because I thought that mom wouldn't have any problem taking care of that thing. No matter how much I agonized over how mom and dad might react, every scenario came to the same end. Oh, I know. I don't have to tell them that Maru was here. Hamsters are small, and they don't make a lot of noise. And unlike dogs and cats, they don't need to leave their cage. I could keep Maru in his cage for the entire week, and if mom and dad don't see the cage, they won't know that I've brought him here. Once I realized that, I rushed to the cage to my room upstairs. I put it in the corner next to my chest of drawers so that you couldn't see it from the doorway. I set up some pillows around it so that you couldn't see it was there unless you looked really carefully too. And just like that, my worries were gone. I didn't have to leave Maru alone at grandma's and mom and dad wouldn't tell me to throw him out. I started feeding him and making his bed without anyone noticing that he was in my room. We'll be together forever, Maru. Don't worry. I didn't have to worry about buying hamster feed because grandma had already bought everything we needed and kept it in storage at her house. If I need anything, I could go to grandma's to get it and I could call her if there was an emergency. Now I don't have to worry about anything. Everything will be okay. All right, Mika, let's get going. We got your audition for that commercial today. The commercial's gonna be used during prime time. If you get the part, your face will be known to everyone sitting down to watch TV during dinner time. Just think about it, that's gonna be a lot of people, Mika. You'll be famous. Huh? Mika, 
Where are you, Mika? Hey, what's this? My heart sank when I heard Mika's voice. I had a bad feeling that she had found Maro. I had left my room to go to the toilet, so she must have snuck in and started nosing around while I was gone. I panicked and rushed back to my room, but it was too late. What are you doing? Don't come in my room without asking me. Well, what's this hamster? Where did you get it? It's not fair that you get to keep a pet and I don't. It's Grandma's hamster. I'm taking care of it while she's gone. What? You never told me that you're keeping the hamster here. Why did you bring it here? But Grandma told me that she told you that I would have to take care of it. She told me she called you. Honey, what are you all shouting about? We gotta get going. We'll be late for Mika's audition. You got to look at this. Ayaka's brought a hamster home without our permission. Ayaka? What were you thinking? We don't have time or space to be dealing with stuff like that. What are you gonna do if it bites Mika when she tries to pet it? She's gonna get hurt. Honestly, your dad's right. What are you going to do if Mika gets hurt? She might even get sick if something that dirty bites her. Then what should I do if I can't keep him here? It's simple, Ayaka. If you want to be with that hamster so much, you'll have to leave with it. Get out of our house right now. What? But where? Where do I go? <sighs> We're running late. I don't care what you do, but make sure that thing is out of our house by the time we get home. If you don't, then we'll just have to get rid of it for you. What do I do? I wasn't as pretty as my sister was, and I wasn't as talented as her either. There was nothing that made me better than her. But even so, I didn't think that they would want me out of the house that much. I really was just in the way. I was unwanted. I knew that they didn't care about me as much as they cared about Mika. But it still hurt to hear my mom tell me that I had to leave the house if I wanted to keep Maru. I didn't want to have to give Maru up and send him back to the pet shelter. But if I tried to keep him here, in the house, there was no telling what mom and dad might do to keep Mika safe. Even as a young child, I knew how ruthless they could be when it came to Mika. So, I made up the decision to take Maru and run away from home. I gathered all of my treasures into my favorite rucksack, picked up Maru's cage, and walked out of the house. And I headed to the only place that would welcome me, the pet shelter. Excuse me. Oh, Ayaka, what's the matter? You look like you're packed up and ready to go on an adventure. Did something happen? Um, the truth is, I told the pet shelter lady about the way my mom had been treating me up until now, and the reason why I had decided to run away from home. She listened to me and nodded as I spoke to her. Then when I was done, Is that so? You've suffered a lot, Ayaka. Is that why you're always coming and spending time here? Because you don't want to be at home? Because your parents tell you that you're in the way? Yeah. When I nodded in response to her questions, she got down on her knees and hugged me tightly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't realize sooner. I should have realized that it was strange for you to always be coming here to see the animals. But it's going to be okay. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. I'm going to be with you. Yeah, thank you. When she hugged me, it felt so warm and so at ease. I felt like I could trust her to help me. I know. I think I should talk to your parents. It's very important that they understand that they're doing something wrong. It might be easier to go through your grandma, but the problem lies with your parents. I've got to deal directly with them. Nothing will change unless they realize that. What? For a second, I was surprised by what the pet shelter lady had said. And even if I wanted to ask for grandma's help, she wasn't available right now. Instead, I decided to rely on the lady to help me talk with my parents and deal with the situation at home. My parents were out with Mika for her audition, so I stayed at the pet shelter with the pet shelter lady for a few hours. When we felt that it was the right time, we left and headed for my house together. When we arrived outside, the lights were on in the house, and it looked like they had just gotten home. Who is it? It's lovely to meet you. I'm the manager of the local pet shelter. The pet shelter? What do you want? I'm actually here in regards to the hamster that I believe your mother adopted last week. I don't mean to intrude, but I heard from your daughter that... The pet shelter lady was going to help me convince mom to let me keep the hamster here. I believed that she would make everything better, and stared at them both talking, feeling like my heart was in my throat. But... It's easy for you to say. We can't keep it. We've got a promising cash cow in this household. A cash cow? Our daughter, Mika. Have you seen her? She's adorable. Our daughter is going to be a rich, famous actor when she's older. That's what she's destined to be. But what are we supposed to do if she gets bitten by that rat? And if she gets ill, or worse, gets a scar? There's no need to worry about that. Hamsters aren't that violent. And if you make sure to take care of it properly, that sort of thing won't happen. Listen to me. We're not interested in keeping a dirty hamster in this house. We don't want it or need it. I only agreed to take care of it in my mother's absence because she asked me to, but I wasn't happy about it. I understand. Then I don't need to hear any more from you. I understand that there's no point arguing with you, 
because Ayaka's just going to feel worse hearing you talk about her like that. Come on, Ayaka, let's go. I didn't expect the pet shelter lady to get angry. She never even got annoyed at me for turning up at the pet shelter, so I was surprised to see her so mad. But I could tell that making someone as kind as her lose her temper meant that the things that mom was saying really were horrible. Oh, you're going to take Ayaka with you? That's perfect! We can get rid of two pieces of trash in one go. We'll be able to save having to spend money on her food, and we won't be as stressed out as we were when she was in the way. Thank you so much. Ayaka, don't listen to her. Let's go. Like that, I ended up going home with the pet shelter lady. And after she told me that her name was Mei, I started calling her Auntie Mei. I didn't realize until I was an adult that Auntie Mei had gone into a lot of trouble to take me in, and it wasn't as simple as just taking me home with her. First of all, my grandma had been kind enough to adopt the hamster in my stead and help teach me how to take care of it, but she had been against me leaving my parents' side and urged for me to go back home. After I left home, it seems that an investigation was conducted by child services to see whether my mom and dad were fit to take care of me, and when the results came through, it was decided that I would be staying with Auntie Mae. That said it all. But the strangest thing was that I didn't feel so sad or shocked about knowing that my parents didn't want me anymore. I was just happy that I would be able to leave that house and would be able to get away from the pain they caused me and the hurtful memories I had there. After that, I went to live with Auntie Mae and her husband, and they raised me. They lived in a house close to the pet shelter, and they didn't have any children of their own, so they had enough money to take me and Maru in. And that's why... After they heard what I had been through at my parents' house, they believed they were meant to meet me, to rescue me from that environment. My grandmother was still against the idea of me staying at a stranger's house, and we were supposed to meet with her, but she ended up in a car accident on our way home from her friend's funeral and was admitted to the hospital. I went to visit her in the hospital with Auntie Mae, and she seemed really surprised when she heard what I had been through at my parents' house. But she stopped defending her daughter and finally accepted that Auntie Mae was my new guardian. Once I had moved in with Auntie Mae and her husband, I wasn't worried about losing Maru anymore. I could even take him out of his cage and play with him in a bigger play area without getting told off. And because I was still living in the same neighborhood, I wasn't too far from school, so I didn't have to transfer in the middle of the year. I didn't get told off for anything unreasonable, and they didn't ignore me or treat me coldly. I had always felt unwelcome at my parents' house, so I loved the warm and comfortable life I led at Auntie Mae's house. I was happy, and I knew that Auntie Mae and Uncle were happy living with me too. No! Maru! Ayaka, don't be sad. I know it's hard, but Maru lived his life to the fullest. That day, I woke up to find Maru still sleeping, and when I picked him up, I realized that he was already cold. A hamster's life expectancy is about two years. When I first met Maru, he was already one year old. Like Auntie May assured me, he had already lived his life to the fullest, and had probably died of old age. But even so, he was my first pet ever, and the first time I had ever experienced death so close. I was distraught. And then five years after I'd been taken in by Auntie May, I'm currently enjoying my high school life as a regular student and making the most of every single day I have with my friends and with my auntie and uncle. I couldn't ask for anything more in my life when one day, I'm home. Welcome back, Ayaka. Come look at this. What do you think I've got? What? What is it? Auntie May had her hands clasped in front of her body. On closer look, they were formed in a ball, and she was hiding something inside the shape she had made. Ta-da! Oh, you scared me! <laughs> Hidden inside Auntie May's hands was a little hamster. Ayaka, happy birthday. This is your present. Really? Thank you! It had slipped my mind, but today was my birthday. I had completely forgotten about it. Ayaka, you still love hamsters, don't you? I thought you might be happy if we welcomed another one into our family. I searched for the cutest one in the center and brought her back home. What? She's a girl? I'm super happy. Thank you so much, Auntie Mae. For the first time in five years, I was able to raise another hamster, and I fell in love once more with how small and fluffy they were. This hamster had brown spots on her body, so I decided to call her Coco. Oh my goodness, you are so cute, Coco. It had been a long time since I last held a hamster, and I felt nostalgic just stroking her fur and watching her sniff the air. It took me a while to realize that I was playing with her every single day and spending every moment with her. Then, on a whim, I took a video of Coco playing and running around and uploaded it to social media. All I wanted to do was share how precious she was and hope that some fellow hamster lovers would enjoy the video. I didn't really think much about it. An hour after I uploaded the video, I had done my homework and had picked up on where I left off in the book I was reading. I had forgotten that I had even uploaded the video. 
Ooh, what's that noise? So annoying. When I woke up the next day, it wasn't to the sound of my alarm clock. It was to the sound of my phone. But it was a sound I had never heard before. Or rather, I could recognize the sound as my notification ping. But it was repeating over and over and over again. In a way I had never heard before. I didn't understand why it was making that much noise. And I picked it up to check, only to find... What? 30,000 retweets? I had woke up to find that the video I had uploaded the previous night had become a sensation overnight. People from all around the world were sharing the video of Coco and passing it on to their friends and family. When I checked the comments section, a majority of them were positive. I want to see more. Do you have any more videos? You've got to share more videos of your hamster. She's too cute. It seemed like there were a lot of people that wanted to see more of Coco's videos. So I splashed out on a camera and took more videos and uploaded more content to my page. I'm now 20 years old and studying at college. Ever since that first video of Coco went viral, I've been uploading more and more videos of me playing with hamsters and giving tips on how to take care of them. I've become a hamster girl influencer and I've gained a lot of popularity among people that are around my age or younger. And since I gained recognition as an influencer, I've actually received a few invitations to appear on TV. And today is actually the day I attend my first TV interview. Today, I've come to the studio with my partner Choco where we'll be recording the interview. Unfortunately, but inevitably, Coco passed away just over a year ago, and I hope she's watching over us from heaven. I adopted Choco from the rescue center over a year after receiving Coco as a present, so they were just like sisters, and I think that both Maru and Coco would be proud of Choco for making a TV debut with me. I think that it's a rare sight for someone to be holding a hamster while being interviewed, and honestly, I feel really nervous but I'm sure that it will be fun for viewers to see how playfully and silly Choco is. I was scared that I might not be able to speak and that Choco might get stressed, but thankfully, we were able to finish the interview smoothly. And then, when the program was aired, I was no longer limited to being popular on social media, but also became a household name as a hamster lover. I found it hard to believe, but I even got the attention of a talent agency who asked me to sign a contract with them. In other words, I had become an influencer slash uprising talent. And from then on, my agent was getting calls from quiz shows, variety shows, all of them asking me to appear alongside some of the country's most popular entertainers and actors. Apparently, everyone sitting in front of the TV was loving that I was holding an adorable hamster in my arms and wanted to see more of Choco. However, I didn't want all of the attention and the movement from home to studios to affect her health. So I made sure to keep those appearances to a minimum. I declined invitations to locations that were too far or were too stressful for animals. I had already made it clear with my manager that there were boundaries that needed to be kept to ensure that Choco's health and safety was top priority. All of these appearances didn't mean anything if she was put in harm's way. When Choco got a little too old to appear in programs, I decided to change things up and stop appearing on TV with a hamster in my arms. I'm now working as a talent on my own and I've recently gotten a few jobs as an actress. In the beginning, I couldn't imagine myself as an actress and said no to all of the offers that my agent was bringing me because I was too scared to test my popularity without Choco by my side. But Auntie May reminded me that I shouldn't be scared to challenge myself and urged me to try it out. So I accepted a role that I felt I could reach for. And today is the day I debut as a professional actress. I have a part in a movie, so I was desperate to remember all of my lines. But in the end, the director suggested that my character should own a hamster, and I was able to keep Choco with me so that I wouldn't be so nervous. Thanks to Choco being with me, I could just look at her, and whatever worries or nervousness I had would completely disappear. I think that my first role was a success because she was there to support me for the entire time. Ayaka, you did a really great job. You've got a sense for acting. Director, thank you so much. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I was wondering if you'd be willing to appear in my next movie. I've got another role that would be perfect for you. Really? Yes, please. Of course, I'd love to. I had made my first big step as an actress, and because of the instant praise, I almost felt that everything was going a little too well. And at just that moment, I noticed a certain woman standing at the edge of the set. Mika? I caught sight of someone that looked just like my little sister, Mika. My parents had been expecting a lot from her when she was a child, but despite all of the auditions she attended and the small role she had grabbed, her potential had never blossomed. But I couldn't believe that Mika was also appearing in the same movie as I was. It really is a small world. Mika's name wasn't listed on the script, so it was clear that the role she had landed wasn't for a major character. That's probably why I hadn't noticed her until now. Ayaka? I got shivers when I heard a familiar voice calling my name from behind me. 
I slowly turned around to see that my mom and dad were standing just a few meters away from me, even though I had made up my mind to never see them again. Oh, you've grown so much. You're a star, Yaka. We're so proud of you. That's my girl. I didn't expect any less from my daughter. I've always believed that you would make it big one day. What? Ayaka, what do you think about coming to live with us? We're family, aren't we? We should stick together. Uh, when they said that, Mika didn't hesitate. Ayaka, just because you've gotten a little famous doesn't mean you can let it get to your head. Don't get carried away just because you've finally made your debut. You're not even that pretty or that good at acting. I'm not going to stand by and let you prance back into our house like you're better than me. You're worthless. The set suddenly fell silent, and I could tell that everyone was looking at us. But with just one comment from Mika, the memories from the time I'd spent living with them came flooding back, and I snapped. I was going to stand my ground this time. Excuse me? I wouldn't go and live with you again, even if you begged me. And what's your problem? You think I'm the one that's getting carried away? As if. Don't take your frustration out on me just because your career has come to a standstill. Oh, oh, what did you just say? No. The moment Mika tried to bring her hand down on my face, the actor with the leading role, Mr. Himura, grabbed her arm to stop her. That's enough. You and your parents have already caused enough trouble on set already. What? Mr. Himura? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me for interrupting filming. I'll stop. Please. Hey, explain what the hell's going on over there. Don't you dare lay a hand on Ayaka. Explain yourself. The entire film crew was in an uproar. But luckily, we had already finished filming for the day, so the damage was minimal. Mika's outburst didn't affect filming and didn't cause any delay either. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm okay thanks to you. Thank you for saving me like that. Mr. Himura was the most popular actor at the time, and it was the first time I'd ever seen him in the flesh. He was handsome, but he also had a wonderful and kind personality. One week later, I came across an unbelievable article on the net. The article shared details of how Mika had lost control and taken her anger out on me, and how she had attempted to hit me after we had finished filming. According to the article, the film director had spoken to a journalist he was close with and told them everything about the drama that had unfolded, including how Mr. Himura had stopped Mika and lectured her in front of everyone. Not only that, it seems that the film director had revealed the trouble that Mika's parents had been causing on set too. Apparently, my birth parents had been tagging along to all of Mika's auditions and even to film locations even after she had turned 18. So they had become a little infamous in the movie industry for interfering in Mika's career too much. As a result of her own actions, Mika's acting career came to an end, and I heard from an acquaintance that her parents had been banned from appearing at the studios. The article got a lot of attention, and Mika and her parents became internet stars for a bad reason, and got a lot of hate from film fans. After that, Mika was forced to step down from her small roles in some very minor commercials, and from her position as an ambassador to some super local and nameless networks and lost all of the jobs she was barely clinging on to. I bet that her parents must be very disappointed that she's not the cash cow that they hoped she would someday be. But I think that they can finally give up on that dream now that Mika's completely lost a chance to get any job offers because of how much trouble she was always creating for the film sets she passed through. No sane client would offer her a role if they didn't want to ruin their own reputation. So I think that it's safe to say that her career is over. As for me, I got to know Mr. Himura ever since he saved me that day. And we're now engaged and planning our wedding. And my Auntie Mae, who is the one person I owe my life to, and the person who I've thought of as a mother for all these years, is now officially my adoptive mother. I cut my ties with Mika and her parents a long time ago, so I was surprised that my biological dad had the nerve to say, that's my girl, when he never expected anything from me when I was living with them. I was only ever worthless to them, but I don't care anymore. Anyway. You might be wondering what's happened to the pet shelter where I met Auntie Mae. Well, the building was getting a little old, and she was wondering about how to deal with all the things that were falling apart. So I used the money I had earned to reform it and make it more accessible and comfortable for the animals. When everything was complete, she became so tearful, and I was happy to see that she was pleased with the result. I was glad that I was able to do something for her after everything she and uncle have done for me. My career's only just begun, and everything is going pretty smoothly. I've even been given the honor of appearing in a movie directed by an acclaimed director and as the protagonist. Filming starts next year, but I won't forget my roots. I'll always be a hamster lover. And even after starting my film career, I've continued to upload videos of Choco and her friends online. By the way, all of the money I make from the hamster videos I upload are 100% donated to animal charities and used for the good of all the other hamsters and rescue pets in the world. So don't worry. 
I'm doing it for a good cause. I'm going to continue to work hard for the sake of all animals and hope that the money I earn will go towards helping more and more sheltered pets that are in need.